Special thanks to our promotional partners at the American Philatelic Society. The APS is the largest stamp collecting organization in the world, supporting collectors of any level worldwide. For more information about membership and APS services, visit stamps.org. I'm Charles Epting from Metro Harmer in New York City. And I'm Michael Cortese of Noble Spirit in Pittsfield, New Hampshire. And this is Conversations with Philatelists. So, Charles, our guest today, we we both last saw him in uh, Monaco, Phil, in 2017. We're For this episode, we're traveling to an exotic part of the world that we've never gone to before. Yes. This is a, a far-off foreign land called Canada, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, where our guest Chris Green is located today. Yes. Um, he will be calling in from Ottawa, I believe. That's a far, far off distant, distant place where conversations with Flatulus has not gone before. Uh, but Chris, it, you're right. We last saw him in Monaco. Um, I, I, I love seeing him when I travel. He's, he's a, a great guy to hang out with at a show. And what I think is really interesting is that um, Chris Green has a stamp shop. Mm-hmm. And not like a, an old stamp shop that he's inherited and is keeping alive, but one that he actually started himself. Yeah. which is just so crazy to me. It, it, it's so antithetical to um, the way everybody's doing business. I'm speaking to you who exclusively deals on eBay. Um, I think it's so cool that there's someone out there who is going against the grain and, and doing this. Um, Chris is very knowledgeable. He, uh, he works for Spink USA as well. So he is in the auction business. Um, but, but again, the, the majority of his time and the majority of his business is spent on a, an actual brick and mortar stamp shop in Canada, which is, uh, which is just so cool to me. I'm, I'm so curious, uh, to hear more about that and especially to hear about how he's been coping with, um, right. uh, you know, this year, uh, if it's going to affect anyone, it's going to be the, the, the physical stamp stores. Yeah. It, 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 it'll be interesting to, to talk to him about that because I, again, like you said that it's, it is going in the direct opposite path of everybody else people have been stamp stores have been closing down and and here he opens one up and then six six years later a pandemic hits that that threatens the existence of stamp stores even further but but here he is and what's great too he's not a a a luddite he's not you know going against technology he's very active on social media he sells online he you know he's on virtual stamp so it's not like he's doing this to be contrarian or to you know, um, you know, uh, to to spite the internet, he's still right. very actively involved in in digital philately. He, mm-hmm. he sells online. He's got a great online presence, and I think it shows that it's not a, a dichotomy. It's not an either or scenario. Right. Um, you can you can mix these two and and have successful results. It seems. It 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 does seem. It, it just his passion. Show for philately shines through because of because of this exactly. People can see that he. He believes that the hobby should be both things. It, you know, it's like a love letter to philately. With that being said, let's bring him on. I'm, I'm really excited to chat yeah. with him. Yeah, uh, here he is. Hi, Chris. Hi, Michael. How are you? Good. How Hi, are Charles. You? Good to see you, Chris. You too. You too. Thanks for. Uh, this is the most books we've ever had amongst the three of our backdrops. <laughs> I was, I was just, gonna, but it's kind of obligatory for a Zoom call, isn't it? Yeah. it, it it's to... a very, it's a very literate looking uh, conversation we're having now. We, we, we <laughs> you guys are uh, classing the place up. I, I look more educated than I am. <laughs> um, uh, thanks, thanks so much for for joining us. How have you been holding up? Hey, not at all. I appreciate uh, the invitation to uh, to come on and chat. And yeah. uh, no, things have things have been going well, all things considered. Uh, I, uh, I I can't complain. Thankfully, we're very lucky up here. <laughs> yeah, I hope I hope the same with both of you. I know. Yeah, yeah, it's been um, it's been pretty well. We have so, so much free time. We can do a podcast. Now. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I waited until we were incredibly busy to to ask Charles if he. If you wanted to do a podcast with me to spend more time um, doing not work things, <laughs> well, it, it fits it fits into the work we do, right? And yeah. I think you've you've found a good audience, and you've had uh, yeah. a lot of uh, a lot of great great interviews and a lot of good uh, good philatelists on to share their stories. So uh, I yeah, think it's, it's been a lot. Uh, of, I think it's great it's you guys have fun. put this together. It's been fun, and we appreciate you joining us. What has this been like for you? You're in a, a unique position, I would say. A lot of people we talk to um, 
uh, you know, maybe they only, you know, somebody like Michael only deals on eBay or our sales are more and more going online. When you have to, to focus on the, the physical aspect of the hobby, the retail side of things, how has that been? Um, because you're, um, I want to say the first person we've spoken to, to deal in that side of the hobby, you know, so. something that, that for a lot of people has been dying off, but for you seems to be, um, uh, you know, going quite well. Yeah, it's, uh, and there aren't, as you say, there aren't, I don't think too many of us, if you look at the, the Canadian Stamp Dealers Association, I think out of our membership, we have I'm probably fewer than 10 members who have bricks and mortar stores. Wow. Um, the rest, uh, you know, of course, once upon a time, I, I have clients who, who, who can tell me that they remember even in Ottawa, there being a half dozen stores at, at, at one point. Uh, well, it uh, doesn't quite match New York, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> once upon a time. Though, though, even that slim pickings now, I think. But uh, for I was going to say, there's stores, as many um, as many in Ottawa as there are in New York right now. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> <One. laughs> um, but uh, you know, I, I I opened up about six years ago, and um, uh, that was just after the last store in Ottawa. A fellow who I'd uh, I, I'd started working with, in fact, when I was still in in school part time. Uh, chose to uh, retire and, and close up his his retail shop, and so I opened one up the day after he closed his, um, and uh, and sort of carried on. But but even back when I was younger and and first as a kid started going to shops with stamp shops with my dad, there were only two left in the city. So it's uh, there haven't been too many for some time. Um, but it it goes well. We have a very good local collecting base. Um, we have several active active stamp clubs. Um, and uh, all, all of whom are still meeting on Zoom right now, like yeah. <laughs> like everyone else. Um, but um, but we're lucky that in Ottawa we have a very good a very good collecting community, and um, and they've been very supportive. Um, obviously, in the last six months, six seven months, well, it keeps keeps getting longer, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, it's uh, it's been a bit um, more difficult, more challenging. We closed up completely for for several months because of the the rules shutting down non-essential retail shall we say shocking to know i know that stamps were not considered an essential business here but um <laughs> we uh, we weren't um and uh and so really for that for that period of time went exclusively online um and and carried on that way and so uh you know sometimes for for a day a week, instead of going into the shop, I was sort of a delivery driver and drove around town uh, with uh, parcels <laughs> of, of stamps and albums and stock books for local collectors. That's um, fantastic. And, um, and, and thankfully, as of a few months ago, we were able to, to open up again. Um, but now we have somewhat reduced hours and we only um, have visitors by appointment mm -hmm. um, to, uh, to keep the, the numbers at a level that's, you know, safe for everyone and uh and make sure that we can we can keep going so it's it's been a shift but we're we're lucky that we've had some supportive very supportive customers and we're fortunate for that so you you're you say you've been going more online what has that been looking like for you well the the timing work worked out well about a year and a year ago we relaunched our our website um and uh so when i shut down the retail business the storefront in in, in march um, that meant, uh, well, no surprise to you, Michael. Many hours of a day processing material yeah. <laughs> to to get up uh, to get online. Um, a lot of the a lot of things, of course, I'd had in the shop that were already described and written up, but just the time had never been there to do the the work needed to scan it and process it and, and do all of that. And so that became sort of the the main the main focus, and it became you know selling, of course on our website, selling on eBay. Um, and um, of course, just directly with customers who email us with want lists or who, you know, we might happen to know their collecting interests and had something that we thought they might like. And so we'd get in touch, all, all of those things. Um, but uh, it, it, was a, it was a transition. It basically went from a retail storefront that did some internet business to an internet business exclusively now that thankfully can do a little bit of retail again. <laughs> yeah. I I like that personal touch you driving around and <laughs> delivering the collections to the <laughs> to the collectors yourself. That's uh I don't think that's something I've ever heard of before. <laughs> I, it's uh it, it it worked out well and 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 people seem to appreciate it and yeah. heck if you're buying a couple of heavy stock books it's a lot easier to do that than than yeah. ship it and of course we know that uh, the, especially in the earlier days of this um, mail wasn't 
carrying on quite as, as reliably mm. or as quickly as it as it did in the beginning. So uh, oh, it, it worked out well. <laughs> I'm going to play devil's advocate a little bit here. So many okay. people um, uh, talk about, I, I, I figured I'd preface it with that. So many people talk about how the hobby is um, uh, dying or changing or evolving. So much of it's going online. So much of it's becoming virtual. Why do you still have a brick and mortar business? What is so important about it to you? Is it a purely business decision? Do you have people walking in, buying and selling their collections? Or is it something, and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to make this as, loaded a question as possible is there something <laughs> yeah, more okay. phil- like- is there something philosophical or emotional or spiritual about it to you that that you think is important to maintain the brick and mortar side of this hobby that was yes. the you know the, the basis of it for for over a century yes um because so much i think of what you know makes this a great hobby and what we all enjoy is is the interaction it's the ability to chat with collectors and, uh, and and share stories and and talk about what we're doing. And although we can do it online, we're doing it here. And you know how many societies have started doing Zoom meetings and and everything else, which is which is great. Suddenly we can participate in a lot that we weren't mm-hmm. able to before if we couldn't physically travel. Um, it never quite replaces it a hundred percent. And so I I like having something of a of a hub for the philatelic community in the area where collectors can come um often i have sort of a mezzanine level to my shop that i just that is exclusively my my reference library and and sometimes collectors just come and because they're working on an article they're researching something they want to know if i have a book on something in particular so they can come and look and you know have a cup of coffee and and browse through a um you know one of the a reference book or a catalog or something like that um we can ask questions. Uh, we can we can trade ideas. I I like that. I, I, that's important to me. I think it's important to the hobby to have places like that. Um, when we can get back to doing shows in person, I mean that's part of the fun, of course, of of doing shows as well. Um, so n- no, if I looked at it exclusively as exclusively as a commercial proposition, I I might only be doing internet <laughs> at the end of the day. But um, I, uh, I I enjoy it. I enjoy uh, being able to to have people in the shop and, and and to keep that up. And as you say, Charles, it's it's been an important part of the hobby since since, since the beginning. Uh, I like to do what I can to keep that going. That, that's exactly what I was looking for. And I think it's interesting that people are so dedicated to keeping shows alive and. You know, I, I think shows will be, uh, you know, uh, will be around for a long time. But that retail side of the business, may, you know, maybe as um, an, a generation comes up that didn't experience the hobby that way, um, it, it's interesting how few, uh, especially new shops, but even old shops are are still around. It, it, it's strange to me in a way that people aren't clinging on to that more. When right. you hear stories about the Wheel Brothers in New Orleans or, you know, these, these shops that were really – when you talk about it being a hub, but this, these are, you know, it's not a place yeah. you go buy a stamp even. It's about so much more than that. It's about the, the I love that idea of sharing yeah. your personal reference collection to people who want to come in and, and, and research their own stamps. And uh, I mean, you had Pierre on there a few weeks ago talking about the, you know, the differences in some ways between the European trade and, and North America mm-hmm. and whatnot. And you just had me thinking of, of, of Paris there and the Cade Marigny and the outdoor market and all of the shops around Bruvaux. I mean, these are iconic sort of, of places and important parts to the mm-hmm. sort of the soul of the hobby in some ways and, and, and what we do. And, uh, you know, it's uh, whatever we can do to keep that up, I think is important. That's a great transition into the another question I was kind of looking to ask was how we've been discussing with people all over, you know, in, in Europe with, with Pierre and uh, and with James Gavin in, in Australia about the different ways that, that collectors in different areas collect. So can you give us some insight into what how you think Canadian collectors collect differently to other collectors across the globe? Oh, that's an interesting question. Um, <laughs> I had a better transition to it than I do an answer for you. Um, you know, I I don't know if there's a distinctive of, of way of, of classifying that. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, um, I mean, the focus that you see in, in, in the Canadian market now, I think is similar in a lot of ways to what we see internationally in that 
top quality material is popular. You see a lot of people focusing on particular niches of, of the hobby. So instead of saying, I'm going to collect the country from Confederation to last year, maybe I'm only going to do small queens, but I'm going to do it in, in incredibly detailed fashion. And I'm going to, to do all of the varieties and all of the shades and, and, and this kind of thing. Um, and I think we see that repeating in, in, in many different ways, um, not just in this market. So I think, I think a lot of the trends are, are comparable in, in that sense. Something I'm impressed by is your social media presence, because oh, your Instagram you. account is much cleaner and more professional and more aesthetically pleasing than um, some philatelic social media accounts I've seen. Um, thank, not to name you. names, but, 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 but it seems like you, you have a very, the, the image you present, um, uh, you know, keeps a very high standard of, of quality. Can you talk a little bit about what, what goes into that? Cause I feel like some people, again, not to knock anybody, but some people just post any old thing that they find, um, you know, a random <laughs> cover comes in and let's snap a picture of it and post it. But what you post always feels very deliberate. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. Um, and I, 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 I try to come up with interesting things to, that, 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 are, that, that people are going to enjoy. But so much of it, I mean, what we collect, it's a visual hobby, right? What we, what we collect, um, you know, are, are things that, that ultimately are, are pleasing. I have one, one client who likes to use the word, he likes things with pizzazz. That's sort of what he <laughs> um, tends to enjoy. And, and, I, and I like that, that choice of words. So when I'm, when I'm looking at things that I, that I might want to share on, on social media, I try to pick out things. It doesn't necessarily have to be the rarest thing around. But something that looks nice and something that I think has an interesting backstory to it, because that's also what I think is is so much of the appeal of what we do. At least it is for me. It's it's the it's the history of what's there. It's the stories that we can tell about the things that that we collect and that we're sharing. Um, again, going back to one of the things I said about having the shop, you know, the the, the ability to to meet and talk about these things. So even if it's not in person, I I, I still like to be able to show something that might pique someone's interest as a, not only a stamp or not only a cover, but that, that talks about some of the things behind it. I've asked this question to a number of people who, who own their own uh, or distribution of, of philately or to, to collectors, but then are also collectors themselves, is how, how do you differentiate between the stuff that comes in that you want to keep and the stuff <laughs> that you're going to sell? <laughs> um. It's funny, my own, my own collections always seem to take a backseat. Um, and uh, that's, I think, something of a requirement if you want to do this and actually do it mm -hmm. and, and, and earn a living at it. Um, I can't you know, keep everything that I buy. <laughs> um, <laughs> at, so it wouldn't keep the lights on. Um, but also, I wouldn't have too many happy customers if I kept everything that was good and only some right. of the, uh, <laughs> the rest. So I try to keep my collections to areas, frankly, where I don't typically have a clientele. They might be areas that hmm. are a little niche that, uh, you know, nobody's walking in uh, sort of chasing them on me. I don't have a collection of extremely fine, never hinged Canada, uh, you know, for example, <laughs> or, or anything like that. Um, so I have a little collection, for instance, of, of Stratford, Ontario, postal history. It's a small town in southern Ontario where my, my father's family's from. Um, you know, I collect that. No, I, nobody has ever walked into my store looking for that. So I feel <laughs> safe, you know, keeping, keeping that back. Um, and so I try to try to keep my collecting interests to a couple of little, little fields like that. I don't think we've heard that tactic before. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pretty good one. And uh, well, it's, it's so far, it seems to work. Mm -hmm. So far, it seems to work. Until I get an email now, having said that, from someone who wants to <laughs> to buy a collection to of buy the entire collection, history, yeah. and then I'm up. <laughs> a lot of what I collect, unfortunately, is sometimes more of an accumulation than a collection, simply because what I'm working on for the shop or or want lists for clients or things like that always seem to move their way up onto the desk mm -hmm. more more uh, more quickly than, than 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 my own collecting. So. Um, you know, that's, that's the problem when you turn your hobby into a business in some ways. I have no idea what that's like. <laughs> <laughs> it almost fills the, the desire for the, the thrill of the hunt, finding things for clients that you Bingo. know they're going to want to buy. <laughs> you, get, you get to collect Absolutely. with other people's money. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and and it's, it's true because you get to handle things and enjoy things at least for a period of time that you'd probably never get to handle if you mm -hmm. were just collecting it or, yeah. or have if you were just collecting it. 
and uh, and it's really neat to see um, something find a good home. It's, it's you don't know. It's it's fun to see to go to a show and see an exhibit and and see pieces that you found a home for. You know, um, filling a spot in an exhibit or, or in a collection. You, you know, you know you you get some satisfaction out of seeing it's gone to the right place, even if it's mm-hmm. not in your personal collection. <laughs> What have you noticed about people's collecting or buying habits over the course of the last 10 months, let's say? Have you noticed uh, any, any sort of change or is it, you know, obviously for yourself personally, it's been more online with the yeah. shop closed. But in terms of, of the yeah. buying public, what have you, what, what would your summation be of, of 2020? I, I haven't seen, at least in, in, in my business, a big shift in the sort of 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 material that that people are looking for but i have seen certainly new people coming some people coming into the hobby but more commonly people who maybe haven't focused as much on their collection in the last five ten however many years suddenly finding they have a few more hours that they that they they have to spend on a on a hobby or a pursuit or something like that and and getting back into their stamps and um, that's been the biggest the biggest shift that I've seen. I, you know, you've probably seen the same thing in in both of your your, your businesses. People, you know, coming into it. I mean, it's it's an indoor hobby. It's uh, um, something that uh, was uh, you know you could continue with over the course of of, of a lockdown or of, of all of this uh, you know upheaval we've had to deal with in the last few months. Um, and so you know, more albums are moving out the door. Stock books and mounts and things like that. People. Uh, you know, mounting their collections and, and working on them uh, in maybe a, with a little more time than they once had. And so we hope you, that carries on, obviously, throughout, you know, even <laughs> once we get back to normal. But um, and uh, and hopefully we start to see these, you know, new people back out at shows and uh, yeah. and at some of the clubs when we can meet in person. Yeah, that, that'll uh, definitely all looking forward to that. Do you miss the uh, the traveling? I I, when I I feel like whenever I see you, it's, it's never in the same place twice. I, no. I, I, and a lot of people <laughs> we're like always that. somewhere we're, else, Charles. <laughs> exactly. Do, do, do you miss that part of the hobby? And, and, and why do you think that's so important? Um, you know, because again, we we go to Monaco, for example, and we see each other there. Um, and and you know, again, sort of like having a shop. Maybe it doesn't make a lot of business sense. You know, we don't. Uh, it, it, to me, it, that part of the hobby, the travel, the shows and everything yeah. is about so much more than just making a few dollars. Do you agree with that? And do you miss the, the travel aspect of the hobby? Because, again, that, that's how I know you is from uh, all these different places yep. around the globe. Yep. And yes, absolutely. Uh, and, and to both those points, I, I, I completely agree. Um, so much of this is, um, you know, you might go to a show, Stamp X, for example. I mean, I had a a, a, a booth at, at virtual stamp X. Um, I, for, for several years, I've gone to autumn stamp X. I've never had a, a booth there, but I've always gone to the show. Um, and, uh, it might be the one occasion in a year that I had to go to London. Um, but I got to see so many people because that was such a, that was such a hub. A lot of people made a point of going, it's a major show. It's a great show. Everybody loves it. Um, so it's a chance over the course of a week to see a lot of friends and colleagues and clients um, uh, that we may we may chat and call or, or do business throughout the year. But um, it's it's nice to see each other at a show, to go for a, a pint at the pub or or whatever. Um, it's uh, you know we could we could all be in a lot of different businesses, but the the social interaction. Um, both within the trade and with our customers. I mean, we're all enjoying what we're doing. We're all, we all have a, a passion and an enthusiasm for it. And uh, unfortunately, a lot of us are spread across, you know, a, a lot of different countries um, and uh, a lot of different continents. And so when we have a chance to, to, to get together and meet, it's, it's one of the real highlights of the year as far as I'm concerned. And two, on, on, on the other side, um, I always find something interesting. I always, you know, like to travel with something in mind where I know, you know, tr- whether it's going to an auction or, or picking something up from another dealer at another show um, that I can bring back and, 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 and a customer's going to enjoy it or, or it's going to find something that we don't see over here. Because even though we do, you know, uh, buy and sell a lot on the internet, um, you know, there's always a little bit of hunting involved. Um, and, uh, and, and part of that, hey, it's a lot of fun. Um, and, uh, it's, it's, you know, being there in person, uh, doesn't, doesn't always replay, can't 
you know, doing things online rather can't always replace being there in person. Hmm. So you don't just have your own stamp retail shop and your own online shop, but you also, uh, you've been working for Spink yeah. USA for quite some time now too. Can you talk a little bit about that as well? Yeah, so I've, uh, yeah, so I'm, as I say, my consultant for Spink USA. Um, I uh, used to, uh, which has been a tremendous amount of fun. Um, it's, uh, I've, I've really enjoyed it and uh, um, enjoy working with a tremendous amount of, of knowledge there and tremendous, tremendous people to work with. Um, of course, it's, uh, the travels become a little more complicated in the last, uh, in the last few months. Um, but, um, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's been great. And, um, I'm, I'm glad that I have the opportunity to, to do that. Um, of course the auction business different, different than, than the, uh, than the, than the retail side. Um, yeah. but, um, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's a lot of fun and I enjoy it as well. Yeah. So the video that they posted on YouTube of you holding the, uh, the center line inverted Jenny block, that was, uh, must've been quite the experience. Well, yeah. I mean, going back to what we said earlier about being in the business and being able to handle things that we wouldn't be able to collect ourselves. There's a, a perfect example. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that's a thrill, right? I mean, how often, how often in, in, in life do you get to to get to, to yeah. handle and uh, something like that and be involved in the sale of something like that. I mean, I'm, I feel very lucky to have been able to to do that and to have been a part of that. That's um, incredible. Gosh knows when I'll see that again. When any of us will, yeah. If. if. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So do you have any particular stories from either uh, your own acquisitions or, or collections you've seen from Spink that, that um, really stuck with you and it's something that you that you admire that's a good question <laughs> <laughs> something that i admire yeah something that didn't it didn't necessarily well we can't always can't all have the the center line block in our collection <laughs> but something that you saw that you know it's not directly in your collecting interests but maybe it uh piqued interest in another field that you considered diving into uh once you once you saw it. oh boy well that's that's also part of the challenge because of course we start to see so many interesting things it's always a temptation to drive into a new collecting area mm. like that's that's, <laughs> that's always very very dangerous and you know like uh like we were talking about before some of the interest in the hobby not only being you know the stamp itself but but the history behind it um, you know, I always like to stumble, you know, I was going through a collection a little while ago of, of U.S. US postal history and, and stumbled across, um, uh, you know, a, a whaling letter out of Tahiti that was going back to the United States and just going through the, suddenly you're going through the content and you're looking up the ship and you're doing all this kind of stuff. Um, you know, this is, this is part of the hunt that's so much fun. This is part of the, the, the enjoyment. And you first look at the cover and, well, there was nothing on it that identified it until you right. open it, start flipping through it. And, you know, this is, this is the end. This is really what, what gets, gets interesting. And, and I think, frankly, that a lot of that is the sort of thing that can get new people into the hobby as well. I try to keep a little, I, I, I say this is why I'm doing it. I'm trying to defend against the fact that it's really a personal collection. It's not. I keep a few of these things aside to show to friends that aren't collectors, um, but ask, right? Because people, I think we probably all have experience with mm. friends and colleagues who try to figure out what the heck it is that we actually do for a living, because uh, this isn't something that most <laughs> you know, people have, have experience right. with. Um, so I like to keep a few things. I can say, well, that this is the sort of thing. You know, I have a, you know, an Italian, one of the Italian merchant letters from 1496 or whatever, similar to the Corsini correspondence. You know, for a lot of people, this is, you know, quite neat. My gosh, I'm holding a letter that was sent in the 15th century right. um, or, you know, prisoner of war mail or something like the whale, the, the, the whaling letter I showed to, to someone who thought that was absolutely you know, fascinating. Um, I think these are all, as much as we can appreciate you know, plating studies, it's a bit tougher, I think, to attract new collectors sometimes with some nitty gritty that would in wonderful um, pieces with a historic connection can be a, a good way to, to bring people into what we do and why it's so fascinating and why we enjoy it. Yeah, yeah, it's tough to dive right into 
uh, exact, like you said, plating and, and get someone interested by, by explaining to them where on the sheet a specific <laughs> stamp was, uh, but, was placed. You know, if you look but... at something like Alex's Zululand mm-hmm. exhibit, that, I mean, you know, he's been on a couple of times. I mean, that's a great thing for getting people into Absolutely. You know, how we can bring in things that aren't necessarily only philatelic, but how you can bring in the history behind something. Mm-hmm. This, I think, is really an, an important thing for, to, to, to promote and to, to reach out to, to, new, to new people, to new potential collectors. Speaking of, of bringing people in, uh, we usually start our conversations with this, but, but how did you get involved in the hobby? <laughs> Probably... Uh, a similar story to, to, to a lot of people. My, my father uh, gets the credit for that. Um, he, uh, he, like so many people of his generation, I think when he was a kid, every, every young boy at least had a, had a stamp collection. Um, and so when, uh, when I was younger, he started to get all of his, his colleagues at the office to save the stamps off the correspondence at a time when, of course, you still had stamps on the incoming mail to, uh, to, to an office. Um, and so he'd bring them home and we'd, soak them and organize them and, and, and all kinds of stuff. And, and that was sort of the, the early stages of it. Um, and uh, that was a lot, of, a lot of fun. And then we started, I mean, we had a couple of retail shops in, in the city. And so when I was a little older, we started sort of making a, a Saturday trip once a month to doing the couple of the stamp shops um, and, uh, and, and going from there. And um, it just sort of stuck. And yeah. uh, he, uh, you know, my father st- still still collects and uh, and still, um, you know, would about once a week would come into the shop and and, and hang out and help help me, uh, you know, process collections and, uh, and 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 work on new things that came in. And uh, you know, we talk about being lucky to be in the hobby in the business we're in because it's our our hobby. Well, I mean, yeah. Michael, you know as well. It's nice when you can have a business where you can work with your family too and work with your father too. It's uh, yeah. not not something you can always do so um i've been lucky that that's been something that's that's carried on over the years um so yeah but got got into it from family and that's uh that's that's how it stuck when you opened your shop six or so years ago you said what was yep. the one piece of advice because because again I, i'm fascinated by this concept because everybody's zigging and you're zagging i feel everybody's going online and (laughs) everyone's you know they're opening their online shops i'm so fascinated by this concept what is the one piece of advice that you wish somebody had told you that you can hopefully impart on i i i I find the idea very romantic of opening a a stamp Mm -hmm. shop i i i'm obsessed with this concept and um you know an auction house is is great and i'm 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 happy here but this idea of, of an old school stamp shop what do you wish you could tell yours yourself six years ago um having having been doing it for for that long now what what bit of advice do you have maybe i just like being a contrarian maybe that's why i open you know, everyone's <laughs> going to the internet like, what the heck i'm gonna open a shop just to, uh, you know no it's um you know it's 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 a lot of fun and it's great though at the end of the day of course there's there's a lot of you're still you're still running a business you've still got the overheads and you've still got you know the all of the little finicky things about dealing with a bricks and mortar location, like, you know, suddenly you have to fix the plumbing or the heating system has issues, or, you know, all of this kind of stuff that you, um, you know, the daily back and forth of, of running a business that has nothing to do with stamps necessarily. It's just what you, what you handle when you're, you're running any, any small business. Um, and, um, you know, that, that's, uh, that is always something to deal with and always something that comes up. But um, what, you know, what else? That's a good question, Charles. I like it. Um, and uh, what piece of advice? Yeah, I have to think about that one. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just think it's such an interesting concept. Again, it's it's um, it sort of flies in the face of everything we're told about the hobby on a on a regular basis. Mm-hmm. That it's all online. It's dying. It's this and it's that. And 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 here you are. I think you're a great um, antidote to the to the sort of doom and gloom that we hear. That people love love seeing and I, I when we bring in when customers visit the shop here and even though it's not a it's not a retail shop or consigners come they're always just awestruck at the fact that this many stamps can exist they have their own collections <laughs> but you know they they walk into a place and they just you know it's 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 incredibly different so a, a retail store brings that kind of childlike passion out in in everybody 
every single time they go into it. And yeah, I mean, I, I completely agree with Charles. It's just a, it's just a wonderful. It, it's almost it's like a there's a, fun, it's a nostalgic I- idea of of this this shop that, and I love the idea of just picking up a cup of coffee, going upstairs and, and reading about stamps in the same place that you can buy stamps. That's an incredible, incredible place to be. And I will be there tomorrow. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. I'll look forward to it. The coffee How are you getting across the board? Uh, <laughs> We're not going to cover that. We're not going to cover that in this episode. <laughs> You know, one of the one of the great things I like too um, is that there are some things that you know aren't necessarily economical to sell online. So I have hundreds of these, these long red boxes that we're used to seeing with stamps in them that go from twenty five cents and up. Okay, I can't really reasonably sell an individual single stamp on the internet for twenty five cents, um, but it's great fun when a customer's in there sorting through a box and they find the stamp and it's twenty five cents or thirty cents or whatever the heck it is. And they say, my God, I've been looking for this for 10 years. And mm. it's you know, not expensive. It's, <laughs> it's not. But for whatever reason, they've had a heck of a time tracking it down. Um, and um, nor can I haul 300 of these boxes to a show. Right. Um, so this is, you know, the kind of rummaging, the bit of the, the serendipity of, of browsing and poking through things um, is kind of the fun, too, of, uh, of having a shop. Much like I enjoy, you know, it's much more fun going to a nice little bricks and mortar bookstore than, than you know, just buying something off of the internet because it's tougher to find something by chance too mm-hmm. when you're you know shopping on- online there's always some of the fun of pulling something off a shelf and, and poking around and maybe you discover something or something tempts you into a new collecting interest or something you hadn't seen before or, or whatever it is um those those are all things i enjoy about it too no that i mean that's incredibly right it, you can't you can't justify putting a 25 cent stamp online so if somebody needs that 25 cent stamp that they have to buy an album that has that 25 cent stamp in it which could be worth you know a hundred dollars two hundred dollars to buy a 25 cent stamp it just doesn't make sense but it's but having a retail shop there that that offers that ability for somebody to go in and and find something that they can't find online is just a a terrific service to the to the hobby We we all like we all like when we can handle the rarities and, uh, yeah. and and have an opportunity to deal with that. But you you need you need the inexpensive ones in the album just as much as you need the right. uh, the rare ones on the page sometimes there for those sets. So it's uh, it's one of the great things about our hobby too, right? We can you can collect on a, in a lot of different ways at a lot of different levels, and uh, we can all still enjoy what we're doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, it doesn't matter if the you know the album's worth twenty thousand dollars. If it's missing two fifty cent stamps, it's still incomplete. Yeah, absolutely. So, and and again, another one of these great vague, uh, gigantic <laughs> questions that can't possibly be answered on a podcast. But <laughs> okay, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> so. so where uh, again this is so vague i feel silly asking but where do you see the hobby going do you think there will be the, sort of a weird analogy but vinyl records uh are selling at rates that have not been seen since the 1980s and i know this because i spend way too much money on my own record collection <laughs> uh but but there's been this resurgence in vinyl there's been and even cassettes and and these things that are technologically obsolete but are uh, all of a sudden relevant and and cool again um do you think that uh physical stamp stores could have a resurgence i feel like there's almost and i I hate myself for saying this but almost like a retro chic sort of (laughs) charm to it where where it's I don't want to say it's ironic or it's it's hipster but but a stamp store is kind (laughs) of hipster Um, I'm done talking. No, do, do, do you think I, there could be I've, a I've, resurgence? Charles, in- you know, I've, I, first of all, I have to say, this is the first time I've ever been called chic or a hipster. Uh, that, so <laughs> that's, that's cool. This is a new one for me. Um, so, uh, but, you know, you, you, vinyl, there's, there's a good one. So the neighborhood that I'm in, um, in Ottawa, um, has uh, it's sort of an older neighborhood. A lot of it is, is older residential homes, but the main sort of high street is mostly um, independent shops and restaurants and things like that. And one of them just a few doors down from me is, uh, is a record store. Um, and um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, they, um, you know, have, have seen a resurgence too in recent years. I mean, how much, how much of their trade, I don't know, five years ago was in vinyl versus now, I expect it's, uh, it's, it's a pretty big, big shift. Um, and um, that's... Uh, you know, is it going to be a resurgence in stamp 
shops? Well, I think we've got other economic issues there in terms of, of um, sure. you know, the overheads and things. I'm lucky in Ottawa, we're not New York City, we're not you know, Toronto or London or, or Paris or where I mean, the, the rents to have the space that I have would be realistically prohibitive. Um, but can it cause a resurgence in, in the hobby in, in general or in, in collecting in general? I don't see why not. I think that there's a lot of appeal to something tactile and something that has, um, you know, a tangible connection to, to the past and to history um, in, in a world where everything we do is, is, is digital. Um, and um, so I, I think, I think some of the um, we're seeing on, you know, on, on YouTube and, and, and from virtual stamp X and just some of the new people coming into the hobby. Um, I think, I think a lot of that is appealing to new collectors who like it for, for that reason. And um, there's, there's a lot to, there's, there's a lot of potential there, I think. So, well, I don't think it's, uh, I don't think it's buying the sky doll, Charles. I think, I think you're onto something. So, well, I'm going to give you full credit when I open my combined record store, stamp shop, okay. coffee bar. In a very in, in Greenwich Village or something, uh, you're <laughs> sure. my inspiration. You're my you're my reasoning behind. <laughs> um, I've never had this thought before, but I'm I'm gonna you know it'll be like the Urban Outfitters of uh, Stamp Boy. <laughs> there's some overlap there, I'm sure. I'm I'm, I'm sure. <laughs> no, but I, I I do think there's something um, you know really um, uh, irresistible about the the appeal of a stamp shop. I I, I think you're really onto something. And again, I I have complete respect for going against the grain like this. And yeah. um, <laughs> it's, it, 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 I, I, I wish there was more in New York city. I, you know, you read Nassau street and you hear about the glory days sure. of thirties and forties. And now it's, uh, you know, certainly <laughs> um, slim pickings, but I, I just think it's such a fascinating concept. And, and the more you talk about it, the more uh, I get excited and uh, you know, I, I get ready to, give my two weeks notice to go open my own stamp store. I'll be there for the grand opening, Charles. Thank you. I hope that uh, none of my bosses are listening to this episode. <laughs> <laughs> so did you get, a, have you been getting, speaking on that, have you been getting a lot of people coming into the store as not so much complete beginners, but, but looking to expand um, their interests? In the last, in the last several months, Yes, though you know, until recently we haven't right. actually been able to have them into the store. But yeah. but yes, um, and um, you know, I, one of the things I always enjoy. Um, I mean, all of us get get emails from people who've inherited collections for for whatever reason and are, are you know looking to to do something with them or move them on or sell them. And uh, you know, I can't say there's a ton, but proportionately over the last few months more people who've been in touch saying, I've inherited this and I'm just trying to figure something out about it. They may not right. necessarily want to sell it, but they've suddenly been intrigued by it or they're trying to learn something about it or you know, they want to keep it and expand it. Um, and that's whether that's a product of, of people like we were saying earlier and, 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 and the COVID situation, people getting into hobbies or whether it's some of the, the, the vintage hipster appeal there, Charles, I'm not sure, um, but um, it's, uh, it, it's certainly become a little more noticeable in the last in the last several months, and um, you know that's that's a good sign for the hobby and, and for what we do. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's great to hear that that you're experiencing the same thing up there as we are around here. And and that, are you I, seeing I, that I, too? And in... oh yeah, yeah, a lot of people who and it's it's great for the hobby. Not always great for the for the for the dealer personally. <laughs> But people who email and say, "Hey, I've inherited this terrific correct collection. I'm I'm keeping it. Just tell me how much it's worth." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you you get some of that too. But I think we start to see. We were talking a little earlier about social media. I think in some of the the philatelic the Facebook groups, we start to see a lot of that where people are posting photos of collections they've inherited, looking for mm -hmm. for for information on them. And uh, you know, I think you can you can appeal to a lot of people with that. I mean, pull out a collection with German inflation stamps in it. And I mean, 
not rare, but my gosh, it's kind of neat to see a stamp that had two billion Deutschmarks on it to, yeah. uh, you know, to, to, to send a letter. These are, these are neat little things that I always, if that's one of the things I tend to pull out of a collection, if I'm looking through a general one and I point it out to someone because it's got a neat story and mm -hmm. by and large, any collection that someone's put together casually in the last several decades is probably going to have some German inflation stamps in them. <laughs> um, but that's a neat one that you could point out that's got some interesting history to it that whoever inherited the collection probably didn't know, um, but often thinks it's kind of cool. Yeah. Um, and, and if you can use little things like that to, to encourage people to, to pick up the hobby or to even just think about and appreciate what they, what they have, even if it's only to maybe keep the collection and, and pass it on to someone else in the family who might enjoy it, um, I think it's all, it's all things that, that can help. Yeah, yeah, and I, I say it's not, it's not great for the dealer, but it is when they, when you give an honest opinion, you gain a customer who wants to start collecting. That's uh, <laughs> that's always nice to see. It's it's nice to to help people who want to become collectors because we we all got to start somewhere. And inheriting a collection is a is um, I would I would assume is just as far up there as uh, someone's someone's direct relatives bringing them into the hobby. Yeah. And I mean, of course, it can be overwhelming, right? If you inherit a collection, but you don't have any background in the hobby to suddenly mm -hmm. end up with maybe a box full of albums, let alone just one album, where the yeah. heck do you start? And what do you, what do you do with it is it can, can be a little daunting. Right. Right. Well, a as soon as we are uh, able to legally able to, uh, I think Michael and I are both going to come up and pay you a visit. Yeah, that'd be um, excellent. Terrific. As soon as the situation improves, because I, I, I Obviously, I've, I've been aware of what you what you do, but but hearing you talk about it is just getting me so much more excited um, to come see it in person and, and hopefully recapture, uh, you know, some of that feeling that we hear about from everybody who grew up. You know, again, I mentioned the Wheel Brothers earlier. How many people have I met who went to that shop? And uh, you know, the, the fact that you're you're doing your part in in keeping that alive. Um, the day the border reopens, I'm going to be uh, be on my way up to <laughs> see you. Hopefully, that's 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 sooner rather than later. As we say, we'd all like to get back to our to our traveling again soon and our shows and uh, and seeing each other in person. But I mean, of course, being in New York, the the history of of stamp shops and whatnot, uh, I mean, it's tough to top that uh, that 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 background and that. Uh, you walk down Nassau Street; it's like walking through a graveyard. You say, they, "So and so used to be in that building," and it's uh, it's 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 bittersweet. But uh, no, Michael, we should do a remote episode from. Uh, I'd love that. From from Canada when we I think when we. Only, cool. I looked it up the other day. I think it's only eight hours from here, driving. If you're driving, yeah, it's. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if the the flight from New York is nice and quick. <laughs> that or I'm coming up to to <laughs> your neck of the woods, Michael, and we're road tripping. Yeah, the, oh, I, there we I go. love road tripping. We uh, no, I, we would love to do an episode from the shop, though, if uh, that would be all right with you. Well, let's do yeah. that. I'd be delighted. We could have a lot of fun with that, I think, guys. Yeah. Let's do perfect. it. I'm, I'm in. I'm in. I'll be there it's tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, this, this weekend, are you, uh, you free? <laughs> well, no, Chris, yeah. thank you so much for joining us. Yeah. We, yeah. Uh, Thanks, yeah, guys. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Certainly, if miss seeing you, um, I guess last time I saw you was probably in Monaco. Yeah. Um, probably in Monaco. Yeah, I um, uh, I was talking to Olivia about that. She remembered the the great dinner where where you guys sat across from us, and uh, you know it, it's strange not not seeing you on the road, but uh, this is a, a a good substitute for the time being. And, and again, Michael and I will be up in your neck of the woods as soon as we can. Yeah, I'll look Thank forward you so to much. it, guys. Look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks for the invitation. Absolutely, good talking to you. Thank you. You too. Cheers. Bye. Take care. Michael, you think I'm joking, but after that, I'm really tempted to open uh, my own. We, we can even go into business together and open our own stamp store because yeah, it, I, the, the passion, the energy, the um, it really sounds like he's he's living the dream, and I'm it, I'm really into this idea. It sounds uh, absolutely incredible. I, I, again, I'm so in love with the idea of the the people can just go in, grab a cup of coffee, and you're and, more and, about and the coffee than this. It's game. more about the coffee. You've heard about a place called Starbucks. <laughs> You can go, but I can't buy coffee. stamps at Starbucks. I can't, no. you know, and I can't. Re the fact that he's sharing his 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 company's research library with the public to 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 research the stamps that they're possibly buying. I mean, it's just that's it. It, not, it demonstrates the sense of community. It's, it's heart. It's heart is what it is. Absolutely. Yeah.
Absolutely. Well, I, I, I really enjoyed that chat. I can't wait until I, I'm I, seriously, we have to do an episode from the shop. Yeah, no, absolutely. That, that That's like a, a no brainer for me that mm-hmm. we have to do a You know, uh, I don't think I've ever disagreed with you before and I'm not going to start here. No, I think we should bring CWP on the road. Yeah. We, uh, I, I think we should do an episode from Belfont from the American Philatelic Center got to do an episode from chris greens I, I say we just just take this show on the road yeah uh, yeah we said the spellman museum as well spellman museum let, let's do this i i can't wait for these remote episodes um yeah assuming we can ever travel again right right um, i'm sure we might be able to one other thing i wanted to mention before we wrap this episode up is that december 16th we are doing a a live stream q a with the american philatelic society that That's will true. be on facebook and it'll be we're going to be on zoom but it'll be broadcasting on facebook as well um so we'll have more details about that by the time this episode runs maybe even link in bio oh yeah we'll definitely put a link in bio yeah wow, okay. um but I, I wanted to, to i want to mark that date it'll be in the evening at some point um December i think it just starts at 6 30 actually i believe so but uh hopefully this is something that will be um semi-recurring i i, w- I would hope this is the first of of uh, several of these, but, yeah. but regardless, December sixteenth, live Q and A. What does an auction house do? How do you sell any? Well, anything you could want to ask us. Right. Yeah. Um, how do you bid at auction? Uh, how do you bid at auction? Um, do you have to hold the paddle up, or can you just wait can you be finger? coy about it? Exactly. Yeah. Um, no, you can't. One, wait, one guy I used to know who, or I, I heard a story about, who would hold his paddle up until he wanted to bid, and then when he dropped his paddle, that was a bid. What? I heard this story from somebody. That yeah, sounds... he, he would sit there the whole time, and then when it was ready to bid, he would drop his battle. Hmm. So, anyways, you can ask us about that. Um, maybe by oh, then you I'll... can ask Charles about that. I was gonna say maybe by then I'll remember <laughs> what the story is about. But December sixteenth, live Q and A with the APS. We will um, have the information on our website. Yeah. Michael's and mine's Twitter. Um, you name it. Yeah, I'm. I'm excited because I. Because I, I like talk I, and this sounds weird. I like talking about eBay. Um, How much did you get paid to say that? Yeah. <laughs> what's, no, your, it, it, what, what's your commission? Um, yeah, no, I, I, I mean, I, I do. There's, there's a lot of people that, that don't understand that it's the wild, wild west in some sense. But if you know what you're doing, you can buy safely. If you're buying from the right people, the ASDA members and, and the NSDA you know, if you're if you're buying from these accredited dealers, the, the, you're safe. They, you're safe. It's just I mean, as safe as buying at a stamp show. Yeah, it it really is, and <clears throat> I think that have certificates. That, buying at a stamp shop in Ottawa. True. Yeah, it, just without the coffee. <laughs> well, it, it's going to be a fun chat. I, I I hope I learn more about selling on eBay from you, and uh, I look forward to answering any questions people have about the auction business. Yeah. That'll be December sixteenth. Until then, until December 16th, we are going yep. to be on uh, Google Podcasts. And even after December 16th. And even after, yeah, yeah, <laughs> perennially. Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify Podcasts, all the podcasts. Yep. Um, YouTube. Uh, yep. Website is philatelypodcast.com. Yep. Our email is philatelypodcast at gmail.com. Yep. Um, Chris Green's information will be in the bio. We certainly yep. want Link in bio. to um, want you Go to follow. Go visit his shop. Go visit a shop. Buy a cup of coffee. coffee. Buy, a cup, buy a cup of coffee. Don't even buy stamps. <laughs> uh, su- support people like Chris uh, because that's that's the, the backbone of the hobby. That's as good as it gets. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I don't think I can say it enough. I'm really excited to – I think that's the thing I'm most excited for once once this shutdown ends is to go visit his – his store. I want, to, I, mean, I want to visit everyone we've spoken to. I want to yeah. go on a road trip where we just hit every guest That'd be incredible. around the country. So yeah. um, this is fun. Thank you to everyone who listened. Uh, December 16th, save the date. I'm excited for that. Yep. And, uh, and, and uh, you and me will talk again real soon. Yeah, we absolutely will. You're talking to Michael. And uh, until next time, we'll be back. Yep. See you then. Bye.